And good evening, boys and girls. You cheeky... I can hear... Oh, volume's on there. Uh, let me know if you can hear me before we get started. Give me a big thumbs up. I think Facebook's only five seconds behind. So let me know. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. Who have we got? Kevin, Trevor, Christopher, Holly. Uh, Chris is on Facebook and YouTube. Hello, mate. Uh, Andy. Uh, Flux Gaming. Brian. Ross. Denver. Denver Lloyd. Chef Denver. Hello, Denver on Facebook. Amy. Trevor. Jason. Thank you all for joining me. I know you can flip and hear me because I can hear myself on Facebook. Who's that? Right. Welcome to the 10K show. Thank you so much. I'll tell you what. I... Coming into 2020, I set myself a little target uh, to hit the 10K subs. And it was actually July uh, 2021. That was my target for 10K. So I've absolutely smashed it out the park. We are, what, six, seven, eight, nine months early. So I'm so happy. Thank you so much. So tonight, uh, I thought I would do... I would do a selfish one tonight. I would show you my favourite ever cocktails. So welcome to a night of woo-woos, strawberry daiquiris, pina coladas, uh, not the sex on the beach, but no, I'm joking. I am joking. I haven't got any of those. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Kevin, I'm going a bit upper class just because Mummy Barman got me 9,000 subs. We, I saw that. I saw that. So who else is coming on? Oh, we're all coming on now. Look at all this. Uh, Mary on Facebook. Hello. Oh, hello. Who's this? You, Ulysses, is that how you say your name? Hello, whoever you are. Craig, Claire, uh, X23PFA, Martin in Germany. I think you are, Germany. Uh, Deborah, Lick the Leprechaun, Dave Fry, Moz. Guys, loads of you on tonight, loads. Welcome. If you are watching, uh, make sure you get involved in the comments, especially on YouTube, because there's a lot of banter going on. I am just starting off with actually my favourite neat spirit which is actually cognac it's a vsop uh times are tough i haven't got any xo in the house at the moment but normally i'm a i'm a cognac xo kind of person so i thought i'd start the night off with my favorite spirit but i am gonna kind of go into as i say i've got seven of my favorite cocktails to show you the recipes as soon as i go upstairs into the office after this i'll cut and paste all the recipes uh, so we'll go into the show description show there should be there for the replay straight away uh, there's some famous cocktails in here, but you all know me pretty well. There's some little Stevie flips going on in there. So I hope you enjoy tonight's show. Uh, I hope there'll be a lot of inspiration there because these are slightly different to what I would normally put out on my channel. They're not, they're not pretentious by any stretch of the imagination, but they are slightly different to what I would I would actually do videos off. So. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to tonight's show. Right, I am going to dive in. Uh, a couple, couple of last uh, hellos. Uh, Helena, God, I can't say your surname. I'm going to butcher your surname. I've probably butchered your first name, to be honest, on Facebook. Helena, hello. Uh, and where have we got? Tish. Thank you, Tish. Tish, when you hit the 10K, we are definitely doing a joint collab. So, everyone, if you haven't subbed already, go and sub Auto Social UK. She was awesome. Land Rover video yesterday was brilliant. Right. Hello, Jordan. Jordan, Jordan, boost my numbers. Jordan, come on live. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Right, so the first cocktail I'm going to do for you, I'm going to put uh, that away. Uh, the first cocktail is actually my top of the pops, my favourite ever cocktail. And it's kind of a Mai Tai. I can't really call it a Mai Tai because... The Mai Tai is slightly different to this. However, it's very much based on that. And for those of you that don't know, a Mai Tai, Mai tai is kind of um, a flip on a daiquiri. It's basically an orange and almond daiquiri. Um, but if you're in the UK and you're within my age group and maybe 10 years younger, sort of mid-30s, you might know a Mai Tai for places like TGI Fridays and Henry's and places like that. And I forget the other chains now, but they whack it with pineapple juice and they make it a long drink, and it's really not. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you these. Uh, Mummy Barman is on Facebook for some stupid reason. I don't think she wants to talk to you lot. I don't think she wants to see the comments about her. So uh, yes, right. The first cocktail, as I said, Mai Tai. 
I'm going in my favorite Mai Tai glass. Obviously, a shaken cocktail. Now, as I said, essentially an orange and almond daiquiri, but I'm going to take it to my levels. It is kind of got the almond in there still, but a couple of little flips. So, Mr. Trevor Rose, you thought the ED12 was coming out, the El Dorado 12 year old. Very, very close. I don't actually use that too often in cocktails. Very close. I'm down to my last bits and bobs. It is still a guy on and rum, uh, but I absolutely love that. Where we go, 2005 guy on and as you can see i've only got a little bit left but i are uh, this makes banging banging cocktails i lost track of the price of this now it's probably about 40 45 quid in the uk god knows what that is around the world uh now for this i'm gonna go uk um but if you want to kind of convert these i'll try and put the ounces in as well um in when i do the show notes afterwards but uh, we're going UK for this. So 50, 50 mil double bubble. Yes, we've got to get the double bubble in there. So 50 mil of a decent. Now, my ties traditionally, um, I forget now, Jamaican and, is it Barbados? Dark, a dark or an aged Jamaican, I forget which way around it is now. Uh, and a rum agricole. But I like to go a bit different. So I've got a nice guy on. Guy on is kind of a... A sweeter, more tropical style of rum. Demerara based rum. Demerara sugar. Oh, it's amazing. So uh, that's ingredient number one. Ingredient number two. This is why this belongs in this household. This is my Giffard Posh Pineapple Liqueur. Not much of that left either. This is absolutely banging. Now, you could... I've got plenty of pineapple rums in the house. Uh, we've got that. We've got DMF. I have got... Uh, I forget who this is now. Aldi's or... Um, little, it's one of the two, I forget. Oops. But my point in this is I like to control how much pineapple goes in there and you haven't got that much control with those. They're just big and pineapple. So I like to use this and I'm going just for 15 mil. And this is pretty much available all over the world. I know it is in Australia, in America, in Canada, in Germany, Giffard and worldwide. So we've got that. Now, um, the second one I'm going for is apricot. Again, another, you saw me probably through the week on Instagram. This is Giffard's posh uh, apricot liqueur. I have always made it. Where's it gone? I've lost it. I've got bowls somewhere. There it is. I've got normally got bowls going in there, um, but I've gone posh now. Only a few quid more expensive, but oh, it's worth it. So that was uh, 15 ml of pineapple. I'm going for seven and a half, ten of um, apricot liqueur. And now my sugars, uh, so we're going for the orgeat, orgeat, orjo, orjeet, whatever you want to call it. We'll get it right one of these days. 10 mil of this. Now this is going pretty standard. So the pineapple and the apricot have essentially replaced the orange liqueur. Uh, and then we're back to normal now, essentially. So I'm going uh, 10 mil of orge, of orjeat, orjo, whatever you want to call it, and 10 mil of sugar. And then the final ingredient is uh, some freshly squeezed lime juice. And that makes you daiquiri. So I'm going 25 mil for that. Lovely jubbly. Now you could add bitters. I don't think it needs it, but I've got a little twist coming for you in a second. So I'm just gonna ice this up. Where's my ice scoop? There it is. Give this a proper, proper shake. So this is my Mai Tai. Your, your uh, thing for this is give, give it a proper name. Call it Stevie Mai Tai or the Pineapple and Apricot Mai Tai, whatever you want to call it. But there's one more little twist coming. There we go. Right. Now, the little twist. This is what I love doing in this one. These bitters, uh, these are Miss Better's Bitters. Uh, I can't even say it now. Miss Better's Bitters, Pineapple and Star Anise Bitters. And I've actually got that in an atomizer spray. So I'm just gonna do one one sort of squirt of that in the glass. Oh, amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Now I'm just gonna double strain this. There we go. Look at that. Perfect in my Proper, it's actually called a Mai Tai glass. It's called a Tiki, Tiki Mai Tai glass. And then to garnish, I'm just going 
I don't really do garnishes for this, but just an orange for that. Sometimes Mai Tai, Mai Tai actually traditionally gets served up over rice in a kind of a little rocks glass type thing, but I really like it in that. And that is my Mai Tai, pineapple and apricot Mai Tai. And that is, without a shadow of a doubt, my favourite ever cocktail. I absolutely love this. So let me know what you think of that. Loads and loads of comments coming in. God, let's go back on the comments. Ah, oh, Jordan's right. God, there's loads. Loads and loads and loads. Yes. Have you all subbed to Tish? Is that what that is? Well done. Awesome. I love Tish's... I can't even say it. I love Tish's channel. It's brilliant. Right. Oh, hello. Claire, how are you doing? Claire's on Facebook. Uh, Kevin, who else have got? Midnight, haven't seen you. Hello, Midnight, how you doing? It's a Boston shaker, one glass, one metal. Is that is that in reply to something? Is it, ah, oh, there it is. Is it a three-piece cobbler or a Boston shaker? <laughs> no, I, I don't actually own a three-piece shaker. I haven't got a cobbler. I haven't got one. Not at all. Right, uh, Mark Slamming Vinyl, hello, over on Facebook as well. Mark, come and join us on YouTube. None of, it, none of them can see your comments. Dun, 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 dun. I think that's it. Cool. Right. Proper Mai Tai, I think. Hello, Christopher in Germany. How are you? Another Patreon. Awesome. So as I say, I'm, I'm going to whack that. I'm going to whack the um, ingredients up on there. But honestly, this is amazing. That pineapple and that apricot. I really love, really love the Giffard's range. Oh, it's proper, proper tropical, this. Mm. Delicious. I just think if I was if I was had a proper out and out cocktail bar now, I would I would have a decent core range of rums, but I would actually go the liqueur route instead of all the flavoured rums. Because I just think when you're when you're kind of working, when you're actually selling, you can control the balance of a cocktail much better with all the liqueurs, and I just I just really like them. So that's cocktail number one. Mm. There's so many comments keeping them. It's going to get to the point where I can't keep up with the comments. So thank you very much. There's still loads of you watching that aren't getting involved in the comments. So make sure you do so hello to each other. If, if I, I tell you what, if you desperately want me to see something in the comments, uh, whack some, I'll come up with a funny uh, emoji. Maybe, I don't know. You, you need to start your post with some funny emojis or something like that. And then I'll know to read it. <laughs> I'll try and get through all of them. Right. Well, the second cocktail, I have mentioned this a few times on this channel. Again, it's a lovely, easy one. It's a rum punch, but it is my uh, simple rum, rum punch. And we go back to the early days of when, you know, the pirates and all that used to drink rum. They didn't have all these crazy ingredients. They didn't even have pineapple juice and things like that uh, back in those days. So it was very much kind of rum, lime, sugar and water. And that is kind of the theme that I'm going for for this drink, uh, but there is one little twist in there. So my rum punch, uh, and I'm going to use a, cr a crazy rum. You can see it behind me, but I don't think it's definitely not been out on this channel for quite a long time, but it just works a treat in here. Right. Oh, what all these? Love the rum apricot. Brian, honestly, mate, you'll love this. Trevor just picked up the su banana Sunday. Br yes. Mate, where is it? Banana de Brazil. This is stunning. Love this banana. It's posh, posh banana. Oh, so good. Right. I'll tell you what as well. That, I haven't really shown you guys that as well, but the elder, elderflower one, I actually think it's 10 times better than um, Saint Germain. Oh, it's amazing. Right, let's crack on with the rum punch. The rum punch is going in my kind of tiki glass. There. Love that, another shaking cocktail. Oh, I've got plenty of shakers, there we go. Let's wash up in a second. Right, uh, so, if, so standard rum punch, I'm sure I've done this, uh, most of you probably, hopefully, would have sort of seen how I do rum punches, and it's pretty much the standard uh, kind of formula. You do one part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong, and four parts weak, and then a dash of spice to make it nice, all right? That is a typical kind of rum punch, and then you can kind of play about with all the ingredients and do it in there. This one is actually a lot easier if you do work in ounces. So I'm gonna work in ounces, but I'll convert to mil as well. Now, first ingredient for this, again, is some freshly squeezed lime juice. 
at 15 mil. There we go. Second ingredient. Uh, I'm going to break the sugar element in two. So I've got two lots of 15 mil to make my 30 mil. The first off, I'm just going plain sugar. So again, 15 mil of that. And then the second sugar I'm actually going for is some honey, honey monster. Now all this is, if you want to use normal honey at home, uh, all, all this essentially is, is normal honey, but just lengthened out with water. So it's really, really runny. Uh, do it kind of two to one ratio. So two parts honey, one part water. Should be enough if you don't want to buy a bottle. As I say, I just can't be asked with the faff, so I just buy everything in. It's a damn sight easy for me. But I'm going 15 mil of honey. There we go. So I've got lime, sugar, honey going in there. Now, my rum. Can anyone guess what the rum is? I'm going to have to keep scrolling through these comments. Who's this? Hey, Dominic. How you doing? You just joined. Right, the rum. I am going. This, the last time I rolled this out on this channel was flipping ages ago. But this is a very, very sexy uh, Cuban spiced rum. I'll get it in front of my face so it focuses. There we go. It's called Black Tears. Now, the difference between this and a lot of the spiced rums that I've kind of rocked out on this channel is this is actually a proper rum. It hasn't got the sweetness to it. A lot of the spiced rums have got a lot of sugar and stuff added to it. This essentially hasn't. But all this is is a Cuban rum with uh, chocolate, uh, or cacao, sorry, coffee and pepper in there. And it's just amazing and works so well in a simple rum punch like this. So I've done, hang on, this one's got up to 60 mil. So I've got essentially 15 mil of lime juice, uh, 30 mil of my sugar, so 15 and 15 honey. I'm going 60 mil of uh, Black Tears rum. So two ounces. There we go. Let's just use that one. That one only goes up to 50. So it's lovely, this one. And then, as I say, I just go very, very simple with this. How much is left in that one? Not enough. Um, and it's just water, just plain old water. You've got to think back in the day when kind of rum punches were invented, they didn't have the mixers like we have now. And I just love this. So it's 90 mil of water. There we go, 50 and 40. So that's my four pint, four, four pints, four parts of water. Now, as I say, typical rum punch is finished with the dash of spice to make it nice. I genuinely don't think it needs it because of the spice of that rum. I, I think it's just perfect as it is, but you could kind of play about with it if you wanted to. Right. Just gonna give this a good old shake up. Lovely Jackie. Put some fresh ice in there. Right, hard and fast shake. Lovely, jubbly. Right, I'm just going to strain that out. A amazing. And then top it up with crushed ice. You could, you could decorate it and put some bitters on top, but for garnish for this, I'm just going for a pineapple and a pineapple spear, pineapple leaf. And that is probably my second favourite ever cocktail. Because of the water, I could just guzzle that. It's like, it's like a rum cordial. <laughs> it's scarily dangerous. But I flipping love oh, the honey, but you get the chocolate notes and the coffee notes of that rum. And I, it's just stunning. Really, really is. Uh, right, where do we get to in the comments? Uh, hopefully you're all talking to each other. Right, where I can see this was popping up because it's in caps. Kevin, Steve, demo how to split a shaker. Midnight needs to learn it. Midnight? Who's, where's midnight? Right, hang on, I'll get there half time. Oh, hang on. Is, it, is this a genuine question? How do you, right, it's a Boston shake, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it works, but most of the time I just end up making a mess. Oh, right, okay, right, I'll demo that in a second, not a problem. 
Steve has been on the Red Bull working hyperspeed tonight. <laughs> oh, I need I need to find an app that will read these comments out for me. <laughs> Exotic passions, blah, blah, blah. Right, I think that's it. Right, how to get a cocktail shaker to bits. Flipping really easy, really, really easy. Right, first, the first thing, a quick demo. And I do this on all my online cocktail masterclass as well. Because, to be fair, tin on tin will be a little bit harder anyway, because they're more flexible and create a more solid vacuum. However, because I've been doing this for 25 years, my, my finger guns have got quite used to this. The, f the main part of it is your tin goes on at a slight angle. All right, don't put it straight down like that, because it will be a pain, but it always goes on at a slight angle. Hopefully you can see that. Let's hold it up, can you, can you see that? So you've got a straight line down there. If you're just winding me up and you're, you're not interested, I'm really sorry, but I've just seen two comments. Tip upside down, you give it a good shake. When it's all shaking, yes, the vacuum's gonna be there. But the whole reason you put it on at a slight angle, you can see the angle of the glass. The glass is pointing that way. So you're just, all you need to do is just pop it out like that, okay? Don't twist it. If, even there, if, if I twisted it, I will literally be there till Christmas. If I try and pull it that way, I'll be there till next flipping Christmas. It just won't work. work. It's the laws of physics. However, follow the angle of the glass and it will just pop out just like that in your fingers. As I say, tin on tin will be slightly harder because there is more flexible so the vacuum's there, but it'll just work the same thing. It'll just pop out that way. No need to twat it against the bar. And I very, very rarely ever do that. Very rarely ever do that. So there we go. That's how to work a cocktail shaker. Sorry if you were taking the piss and you really didn't want to know that, but I just saw a comment, so I thought I'd do it. Right, uh, where are we on the comments? Love the glass, the glass, that's awesome glass. There we go. I think Amy Painter, I've seen you. Amy Painter, do you sell, am I imagining things? Do you sell multicolored ones of this? I think you might do. Uh, uh, Nick Pont, hi Steve, love you. Thanks, Nick, love you too. <laughs> oh, you lot are awesome, aren't you? You lot are flipping awesome, thanks. Denver's still on Facebook. Denver, get yourself a Gmail account and come on to come on to YouTube. Chef Denver's in the house. Although we don't chef too much these days. Come and join us on YouTube. Midnight, I think I put it on too straight. Metal cut, it's a smaller. Go on, midnight. You can do it. So just remember, slight angle. Doesn't matter how much welly you give it, it'll just literally pop out just like that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Holly P. Holly P. The next cocktail is going to be right up your street. So keep watching. I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to rinse these off. Quick wash down. My pot wash is not here tonight. My pot wash is, was watching on Facebook. I don't know where she is. She's probably watching Dancing on Ice or something. <laughs> so lockdown. Yeah, I noticed the cocktail, uh, comment about lockdown number two. For all of those of you not watching in the UK and you haven't seen, we are going into lockdown again as from Thursday. So, uh, yeah, why well, not that be fun? Lockdown version two. You can go out. You can't go out, but you can go out. <laughs> you can't see your friends, but you kind of can see friends. <laughs> so, yeah, we are in lockdown again as of Thursday. Thursday morning. Crazy, crazy times, eh? Crazy times. Right. I think I put it on, afraid not. Amy P, oh, you don't, okay. Holly, Holly, Holly. Sweet poison, Chris, have I missed the cocktail recipe? I can't see a Chris. Christopher, oh, up there. There we go, right, Kevin, midnight. Feedback next week, yes. Midnight, uh, Instagram, tag us on a story or a post on Instagram, and then we'll share it with everyone. There we go, right. Let's get on to cocktail number three. It's going in one of those glasses. Holly, 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 can you guess what ingredients come in? Da, da, da. I flipping well love this stuff. This is awesome. And actually, 
This has uh, STB number two. I call him number two because he's a younger version. STB number two I actually rolled this out in a video uh, a couple of days ago. And it just so happens, it, it's an amazing cocktail. I've got a slight twist on it because I don't like to do things normal. So it is a, a Midori Sour uh, coming up. But uh, as I say, I just kind of flip things up very, very slightly because I don't do bog standard classic cocktails. There's no fun in that. So I kind of put my little twist on it. So let me just uh, scroll down there. Now, um, it's, as I say, it's getting served up on there. We're going to do cocktail shaker for this. Uh, should we go in ounces or UK? Let's go in UK for this. However, I think it does. I'm going ounces. I think I think 60 mil is actually better for this. So two ounces of the green stuff. Amazing. Now I've got a funny feeling STB rolled out lime juice for this. And I think lemon juice is actually better for this. So I'm going at 30 mil of lemon juice. What's that? But there is one more little bit of booze element coming on. This works an absolute treat. It just because Midori's only 20%, yeah, 20% ABV or 40 proof, this just adds the extra dimension to it. It's JJ's um, uh, watermelon and lime vodka, and I just think this is a match made in heaven. So I'm going, I'll wash the rest of that out. I'm going 15 mil, half an ounce of that in there. Boom, boom, boom. Um, now sugar, it, this one's gonna be up to you, definitely, uh, definitely, definitely up to you. If I didn't add the vodka, I probably wouldn't add the sugar, but because I've added a little bit of vodka, I'm just gonna add a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of sugar. And I'm just going for uh, seven and a half mil. Not that much at all. And obviously we don't use the egg whites. We don't want the egg whites. We use our famous, any new viewers, uh, that's our egg white replacement, 160 egg whites in there. About a third of a pipette. Now let's just give it a shake. There we go. Every household needs some of these. There's various brands out there now. About just about a third of a pipette. There we go. Right, no need to dry shake that at all. Just fill that up with ice. So this is kind of, this is a Midori sour, but I just, you know, I think the lemon juice and the added bit of vodka just works a treat for me. Right, give it a welly, hard and fast shake. And we've got the frothage. Can you see all that frothage in there? Lovely jubbly. Right, uh, yeah, let's go posh. Fresh ice in there. Right, and then I'm gonna be all proper. I'm gonna double strain. Don't have to double strain, you can single strain, no props. It's just double strain. And I would normally garnish this with some watermelon or something like that. Oh, lovely. Lovely jubbly. I think when you're doing liqueurs, I think egg white does actually give you a damn sight more froth for this. Um, but it is lovely. What have we got? Have I got, got spent lime? That'll do for now. Spent lime on there. And that is a very sexy twist on a Midori Sour. The melon, the light, the watermelon vodka comes through as well. It's only 15 mil, but it comes through. It's not that sweet at all. I, as I say, I personally prefer lemon juice with it. If you want to have a lime juice, Sam is a traditional lemon juice anyway. But if you want to go uh, lime juice, feel free. But this, just a fun, easy cocktail. You could do it with the three ingredients. So Midori, um, lemon juice, sugar's up to you, but the egg white or the, um, the foamers, whatever you fancy. But that is a amazeballs. Right, I saw, I just saw, I've scrolled, I just saw sweet potato jump out of me for somewhere. 
Uh, where did I see sweet potato? Oh, sweet poison. <laughs> I thought I saw sweet potato. <laughs> right, sweet poison. What's what's all this? Oh, I know what I haven't done. That might that's just prompted me. Hang on, let me just read the rest of these comments. You're all talking to each other, I think. Steve swapping between milk and ounces. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Miss Donnie. How are you? Dalton. Hello, Dal Dalton. Thanks for joining us. Guys, if you are watching, just get involved in the comments. Come and say hello to the gang. They won't bite you. Kevin might. But Kev Kevin's funny. You just got to read his uh, sarcasm. He's like me. He goes under the radar with his sarcasm. So, so, don't, so don't be scared of Kevin. <laughs> right. Oh, Andy, get on the, the Midori Sours. Honestly, you'll love them. Uh, this is what I've got to do. Hang on. Let me just get rid of uh, which one? This one and this one. Right. I've got to remind you of this. That is now live. Uh, the post for that is on my community tab. There are loads of recipes on there already. So that's the next I Make Your Cocktails. Uh, Sunday, the 22nd of November. There's a load of uh, suggestions on there already. Go and scroll down. You'll have to scroll down my community tab now on uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, but go and hunt that out. And then the next date for your diary, get your thinking caps on. The post isn't out for this yet, but you need to get your thinking caps on because on Sunday the 27th of December, so just after Christmas, I'm going to do a festive special of I Make Your Cocktail. So I want your cocktail recipes with a festive twist. All right, so that post will go up in the next few weeks or so, but get you just get your thinking caps on. So that's a, that's the Christmas special. We're going after Christmas for that. All right, so uh, where we go? So 27th of December for that one, and then the, the normal next normal one is the 22nd of November. How's about that? Right, let's get rid of that and let's put that back on. Uh, which one? That one. Wait, there we go. Right, uh, where did we get to? David Eden Sangnor. David, come and is another one. David, come and join us on YouTube. Come and log in on YouTube. And then I'll give you a shout out. But Dave's got another cool um, uh, YouTube channel. It's all about iPads and iPhones and stuff like that. It's really, he's doing really well as well. So Dave, get off Facebook. Come and join us on YouTube. Come and uh, get your handle on so people can just click on it and give you a follow. How's about that? Uh, Moz. When are you when are you doing something with those? Ah, Captain Moz, Moz, Moz. Next week is Captain Morgan's week. So um, on Tuesday, Tuesday, I think that's right. Tuesday is the pineapple one, Captain Morgan's pineapple. On Thursday, uh, Captain Morgan coconut is rocking out. And I haven't filmed Saturdays yet. So I am thinking maybe the orange and vanilla twist. I might do the grapefruit, who knows? Who knows? I haven't quite planned it yet. Um, but uh, the week after, I'm actually going to do a vodka week. So I'm going to pick three different vodkas uh, and I'm going to do three videos with different flavoured vodkas. So that's the week after next. So next week is Captain Morgan's week. And then the week after that is vodka week. Right. Yes. Yes, Donny. Yes. Edible glitters. See, I've got loads of... Um, Online, Christmas online masterclasses coming up, booked in already for um, for Christmas. So I've got to work out how to get these into cocktails as well, because uh, they buy their own ingredients, so I can't go too crazy and say, get this and get that. But I definitely think some of these glitters, if you haven't seen this, I've got bronze, I've got gold, and I've got silver. Amazing. Easy to get on Amazon them. They're only a couple of quid. Right, uh, 27 leftover gravy cocktails. Right, there he is, living on iPad. For those of you interested in iPhones, iPads, silicons, and God knows what else, Max, uh, go and give Dave a shout. He's a good friend of mine. He is a bartender as well. He is, um, well, he was a bartender. He still throws his hand about, but he's also a flair bartender as well. He's got, he's got tricks up his sleeve. He hasn't got a personality, so he relies on tricks. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Dave's a really good lad. So go and give him a follow as well, living on iPad. Right, uh, Amazon. There we go. Holly, Holly, Holly. You can find them on Amazon. Just this, uh, they're called, to be fair, drink stuff sell them as well, but they're out of stock uh, and there's something going on. But definitely on Amazon. It's just called Pop a Ball. 
Uh, it's called Drink Shimmer. I'm not sure how close I can get. Will that focus? Yes. Can you see that? Right. Pop, uh, Popable.com. It's Drink Shimmer. And it's silver, gold, and bronze. All right. So hopefully that works. You just need a little spoonful in your a half a half a teaspoonful, sorry, in your cocktails, and it will just shimmer up. Amazing. Right, I'll fight you, Steve. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Right, cocktail number four. This one is really, really going to shock you. Um, really is going to shock you. This one, and I can't take credit for this. I actually found this. Actually. Mummy Barman found this um, last, I want to say last year, but I think it might have even been, I completely lose track of time now because of this. We went to, and Dave will know this, living on iPad will know this bar hopefully really well. It's kind of nearer to him than it is to me. There's a bar in Manchester uh, called uh, Albert Schloss, and it's a German uh, kind of themed bar. Christopher and Martin, you would love it. It is genuinely my favourite bar in the UK. I absolutely love it. They've got a sister bar in Liverpool, but it's at Albert Schenk, but it's nowhere near as good as Albert Schloss. And it's amazing. And this cocktail came from them. They've probably stolen it from somewhere else. I would never have even thought about it in a million years. And this, if you saw my Instagram stories, this is the one cocktail I have already featured on my channel. It's not a standalone video, but it's part of, um, part of a series of videos. And it's just one of those cocktails... Hey, Alho, how are we doing? It's just one of those cocktails um, that is just amazing to sip uh, throughout the day uh, when it's nice and sunny and you're sitting outside. Probably not a winter cocktail, but I'm just doing my favourite ever cocktail. So I, I genuinely, genuinely love it. Right, uh, Dave's given me some banter about free pouring and whatever. Free pouring is like more accurate and quicker than using a jigger. Yeah, whatever, whatever. You flair bartenders, you, 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 you know nothing. You absolutely know nothing. <laughs> uh, da -da -da, silver, silver cinema. Right. Beers I look after. Dortmund. Oh, he's talking about Albert Schloss. Yeah, it's brilliant. Right. So this cocktail uh, is going in this glass. Uh, and you might not be able to see this, but <laughs> I absolutely love this glass. I would use this as a wine glass. It's actually a Bullard's branded glass. <laughs> so ignore the Bullard's. Uh, there's absolutely no gin going in here. But what I'm going to do for you, and it's, as I say, it's really, really crazy. And unless you've watched this video, you will ha not have a single clue that it would ever work in a million years. But I'm going to do a watermelon Aperol spritz. And trust me, it just works amazingly well. I'm not a huge Prosecco fan, but this just works amazingly well. So uh, obviously the ODK purees are coming out. Uh, and I'm going watermelon. Good old watermelon. You could use fresh watermelon if you wanted to. Just get a few cubes and just dice, well, just dice up some watermelon, muddle it down. You've got a bit of watermelon in there. Uh, I'm just going 15 mil, half an ounce, Holly, half an ounce, 15 mil <laughs> of watermelon puree. I don't think, I've spoken about these purees a lot. I genuinely don't think you need much more than 15 mil in most cocktails. These are just super vibrant. So 15 mil of that. And bearing in mind, if you're using fresh watermelon, this has obviously got a little bit of, turn it around, a little bit of sugar added to it as well. So you might need to balance it out a little bit. But the rest is now just sort of a semi-standard Aperol spritz. Uh, so I'm going 50 mil of uh, Aperol. There we go, lovely jubbly. Uh, and there's another little twist coming in here. Trevor, this will be up your street, and I know you've got this ingredient. Ms. Betters uh, Grapefruit Bitters. Oh, oh. Grapefruit, watermelon, Aperol. Honestly, this is such a delight. About a third of a pipette of grapefruit bitters in there. Um, Soda water, Tesco's value. <laughs> um, 30, what have I done? 25 mil. 25 mil, so half the amount of Aperol. And then Aperol spritzes, they've changed their recipe over the last couple of years. It used to be, sort of, say if you went in mil, it used to be 25, 50, and then 75 for Prosecco. Now I think on the bottle, I think they actually say equal amounts of Prosecco to... 
Yeah, and it, equal parts of Prosecco to Aperol. They've changed their recipe. If you've got a bottle that's two years old, go and have a look at the recipe on the back of the bottle. Right, and then uh, Prosecco. However, for this, I actually use uh, rosé Prosecco. I just think it's better. So again, I'm going 50 mil. So same as the Aperol. And this is, this is opened. <laughs> it's opened a couple of weeks ago. I don't drink that much Prosecco, but it still works. Right, so a bit of ice in there. Not too much to start off with. Again, you can make this in a wine glass, not a problem. I'm just gonna quickly stir it to combine the watermelon. And I know Mummy Barman, if she is watching, will be just sitting there waiting for this one. Absolutely, absolutely love this. Right, there we go. And then garnish is just my thing. I've always got dehydrated oranges, so I love a dehydrated orange in there. Get rid of that one. There we go, one, two. And I just think pimping up an Aperol spritz like that with watermelon, just amazing. I say very much kind of a summer afternoon drink, but it has to go in. It has to go in as one of my all time favorites. There we go. There we go. Watermelon, what was that? Skewer. Watermelon Aperol spritz. When it's hot outside, honestly. I could just make that up in a picture and I could drink that all day long before we before we get into early evenings and you want your espresso martinis and your rum punches and your Mai Tais and things like that. Mm. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. So what do we think to that one? Jigger. Yes, Kevin, the jigger did backfire. <laughs> did, you, did you catch that? I was thinking, hmm. <laughs> For those of you that haven't seen these jiggers, I'm still getting used to them. I'm not sure whether I like them, to be honest. But they've got these little, they're dual, they're dual measured, so they're mils and ounces. Um, dual lined, I should say. But the cool thing with them is they've got a little hook. So if you use purees and syrups, you can just hook it on there and it will just kind of sink in there. I've, this is uh, one of Simon Difford's. So he's the famous guy, bartender, UK bartender for over 30 years. He's just got together with Bonza. I think, I think there's room for improvements. I think if STB, me, comes out with a product uh, next year, I think it could be an improvement on that because there's definitely some way to go. I, I definitely like stainless steel or metal, but there's, there's definitely a way to go with that. But a good idea, it's nearly there. It's like 75% there, but yes. Anyway, right, where do we get to? Uh, da -da -da -da. Where do we go? Yep. Uh, Dave, the bubble, two, three, double bubble. Watermelon puree, yes. Tish, honestly, you would you would love this. This is proper, proper nice. I tell you what else, another twist. I used to rock this out on my hen parties when they, uh, the package, when they have like um, reception drinks on a cocktail tree or something like that. And I've got this for, where's it gone? Where's it gone, where's it gone, where's it gone? I've got it ready for a cocktail that's coming up in a second. I've lost it. Da, 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 da. Oh no, technical hitch. Technical hitch, where's it gone? Oh, there it is, right in front of, right in front of my bloody face. What, uh, what um, Aperol spritz with blood orange syrup as well works a treat. I prefer the watermelon, but blood orange. That's awesome. Just amazing. I never would have thought of it. Uh, fair play to Albert Schlosch. I never would have thought of that. Right. Uh, da, da, da. Bit, uh, what does Aperol taste of? Uh, yeah, Christopher's nailed it. Aperol's kind of, it's not quite as bitter as Campari, um, but it's still, it's, it's the Campari family. It's a, it's a bitter aperitif. Um, so there we go. Martin, is that up your street, is it? The Midori Sour? Mm. Proper, right. We are getting on to some fun stuff now. Three more cocktails, what's the time? Oh, this might be an hour long show. I thought that was a the door then. I thought Mummy Barman was coming from her Aperol Spritz. <laughs> right, so I'm going kind of bog standard with a little twist in this. So the next cocktail I'm gonna do for you goes in that glass. Gonna chill that down. And honestly, this is so easy, this one. 
But again, it's another great little twist. Hang on, I've just got to wash my hands. I'm all sticky, you know. World's messiest barman, all sticky. Right. So this is a daiquiri with a twist. Now daiquiris, for my money, are the best way to taste rum. Yes, I know rum is, have it neat by all means, but I know rum's got a lot of sort of rum and coke fans or Cuba Libras, rum and dark and stormy is ginger beer. I genuinely think the best way to ever taste a rum and let it do its work is uh, as a daiquiri. Daiquiris are super simple, super, super easy. As I always say, adjust the sugar to taste, but start with the basic two, one half principle. So two shots of rum, uh, one shot of lime juice, half a shot of sugar. So whether you're working in mils or ounces, it's completely up to you, but just go to that two, one half kind of ratio. And then you can kind of build it out. It's exactly how the Mai Tai was kind of invented. They went with that daiquiri, that two, one half, but then kind of built it out a little bit. And this, this is kind of my flip on a lovely little daiquiri. Absolutely love this. Again, there's no right or wrong with the rum for this, but I always go kind of classic standard white rum. Normally I would use Plantation Three Stars, which is a lovely white rum, uh, but I haven't got any, so I'm going Ron Cube, uh Casa Blanco instead. You could use Havana Three Year Old if you wanted to, uh, but I just like a nice kind of traditional kind of daiquiri rum for this. So I am going, there we go. Uh, I've got Nick and Nora, so I'm going mil. I'm going for the standard sort of 50 mil. So I'm going double bubble of my uh, white rum, 50 mil. I'll tell you what, Ron Kube is all over it. With their, they've got little pourers in the top of their bottles. Brilliant, genius, genius. Right, so I'm just gonna make the standard daiquiri part of this first. Uh, that's lemon juice, lime juice. Uh, so I did 50 mil of rum. I'm going 25 mil of lemon of um, lime juice. That is right. I thought I picked up lemon then for a minute. Oh, just they they look very very. Can you see the colour difference? Lime, lemon. Oh, just right. So uh, 50 mil double bubble of rum. Uh, 25 mil one one shot of uh, lime juice, and then we're going sugar for this. I'm just going 10 mil for this because there's another ingredient coming to build this out. So 10 mil of that, and I love this. It's kind of like a limoncello daiquiri. Oh, so, so, so good. Uh, I just want 15 mil. I've found this by accident and honestly it just works. There's one more, there's one more little ingredient coming. Uh, but that's it, right. Shake this down. Uh, and I do shake my daiquiris normally with crushed ice. I didn't get enough crushed ice out, so I'll go cubed ice and try and get the old the dregs. And the, the shaking with crushed ice just gives it a little bit more dilution. All right, so you just because it's smaller chunks of ice, it's going to melt quicker. So you get that extra little bit of dilution. But I kind of got wet ice there, so that'll do. Little little more bits there. Right, uh, hard and fast shake. There we go. See how easy that was. Who was it? I've forgotten. I've forgotten. Who couldn't, who couldn't get the shaker out? I'm gonna scroll midnight. There we go, see how easy that was. <laughs> right, catch up with the, um, the comments. Da -da -da -da. Daiquiri is just the best drink. Yes, we do love it. One of my other favorite daiquiris actually is with um, uh, Plantations, um, Stiggins Fancy, their pineapple rum. It's not vibrant pineapple, it's just got a little subtle twist to it and I really love that. And you could kind of use grapefruit, freshly squeezed grapefruit instead of lime juice. Kind of really works then. Right, get rid of the crushed ice. Again, my last little flip for this. Uh, we're going back to these bitters. Miss Betters uh, Pineapple and Star and East Bitters. I've just got some in an atomizer spray. Just a little bit of that. Just want a little bit of Star and East coming through. And I'm... Oh, Oh, the pineapple, that's amazing. And then just double strain into a Nick and Nora. Right up to the brim. <laughs> Got to give value for money, ain't you? 
Never fill a cocktail glass up that full. Unless you got, unless you're giving good head. There's a quote for you. <laughs> Do a little, oh, do a little happy dance with that. You get that ever so slight um, star anise notes coming through. Probably more on the whiff than anything. But honestly, the limoncello in the rum, and you some of you might need a bit more sugar. I'll be honest with you, you might. Because that limoncello is actually not that sweet. But for me, it's just perfect. I do know a lot of people that would have a daiquiri uh, 211, so equal amounts of sugar to lime juice. I have got a sweet palate, but I don't need it at all. I go two one half and I just oh, literally down that all day long. Mm. Right. Where do we get to? Daiquiri, love them. Yeah, daiquiris, it's, it's just the thing. Daiquiris will work because it's just lime and sugar it will work with any any rum even spiced rums i've done i always done every single spiced rum i've got in here and i've i'm probably down to about 50 now i've finished quite a few uh, every single spiced rum i try it neat and i try it as a daiquiri but normal rums as well honestly it'll just work it's the best way to enjoy any rum it really is not a question uh, there we go Right, so that is cocktail number five. I, I, I couldn't pick. I couldn't pick which is my favourite so far. Really couldn't. Mm. Probably. I always come back to that Mai Tai. Always come back. Pineapple and apricot Mai Tai. It's just stunning. It's not a thing, but it should be a thing. It should be a household thing. It's that good. Right. Uh, da, da, da. Next cocktail, I've got two more left for you and I'm going for the fun stuff now. The kind of Larry, fun, fruity, how many ingredients are you putting in that kind of stuff? This is kind of what I specialised in 10 years ago. This was my kind of my kind of thing. I used to love doing all this sort of stuff. Right. Uh, let's leave these over here. They can get washed up. I don't know where I don't know if you noticed, but <laughs> we've got we've got more, haven't we? <laughs> Just to keep the continuance of uh, the the videos going. So I've got more. Right, there we go. Leave that there, leave that there. That'll do for the seconds. Right. Uh, now this cocktail is going to get served up in this bad boy. Woohoo! It's a Larry one. So this, I haven't got a name for this. And it is loosely based on a punch. Good daiquiri riff. OFTD. Yeah, there we go. Oh, hello. Chocolate, banana. OFTD. OFTD. Anyone, if anyone's what reading that and needs an introduction to OFTD. Da, da. It doesn't, and I repeat, it doesn't stand for old fashioned traditional dark, even though that's what it says on the label. <laughs> it really doesn't. It's a 69% it's or uh, 138 proof. 138 proof. Crazy. Steve, probably out of Bouvray, eats too much frozen yogurt. I've still got a tiny, tiny. I'm, I've, I'm nearly, you won't see it because it's thick. I've probably got about 50 mil left in that bowl. Not much left. Not much left. But I think I could, as it's getting winter, I think I could move on to that. I could quite easily cut, kind of down that. Cranes, uh, blood, cranberry and blood orange. Right then. Let's get on with this one. Cocktail, what number is this? Cocktail number six. <laughs> I, um, I first created this cocktail years and years ago, but I have flipped one of the ingredients out now. Uh, because of the different purees I've got. I used to make this with pineapple puree. Now, I make this with... Dun, dun, dun. Papaya. Papaya puree. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Again, as I say, these are really vibrant. You don't need that much of them at all. So I'm just going 15 mil of papaya puree. There we go. <laughs> 
see how long that takes to kind of pour out of there. It's good. It's a, it's a good idea. I just don't really like, I, pr I prefer, I don't know. I'm not sold. I've got two of them. It's, gi it's given me ideas for a product. It really has given me ideas. So while that's draining out, uh, next ingredient, I want some lime juice. Oh, it's nearly there, look, nearly there. Uh, so that was 15 mil, half an ounce, get me. Uh, and I've done this one in mil. <laughs> 25 mil of lime juice, freshly squeezed lime juice. There. Now, uh, again, I've chopped and changed. Because there's a lot of ingredients, a lot of flavours in here, I don't think the rum matters too much in this. But I'm going gold rum, and I'm just going for my kind of favourite standard cocktail rum, and that's the Suave which is uh, sherry-based, sherry-aged. I've got a lot of gas tonight. Excuse me. So I'm going 50 mil, uh, yeah, 50 mil of um, my sherry-based or sherry-aged rum. Sherry cask, that's the word I'm looking for. Ron Kube sherry cask. Lovely, jubbly. See, that's where it falls down, look. I don't know how big, I don't know how big Mr. Difford's um, mixing glasses are. Where's it? Uh, comes halfway up the shaker. Uh, don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think there's room for improvements. So we're going there. Now we're going for, here's where all the flavors come from. Uh, first one, and we pimped up because I used to do it with my Bowles apricot brandy. Now I'm pimping it up with my Giffard. Uh, so 15 mil of a Giffard apricot brandy. Uh, next ingredient is uh, liquor 43. So I'm going for my vanilla notes. And you could use uh, Galliano vanilla if you wanted to, uh, but I'm going that. Uh, so 15 mil of liquor 43. Submerge it. Uh, now we want the sugars. So first ingredient is my orjo, orjat, orjit. I like orgy. I'm gonna. So my little thing is calling espresso martinis espresso because I like I like all the haters that come in and go. Mm, there's no X in espresso. So I'm gonna. I'm just gonna call this orgy. <laughs> Let's roll the haters up. Right, uh, ten mil of orgy. Oh, I know orgy, 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 whatever. Whatevs, orgy. That's not what I want. Uh, maple, maple syrup. Trevor, you can get that easily. That's just maple sugar syrup as opposed to maple, maple, maple syrup. Again, 10 mil of maple. A bit for luck. <laughs> Didn't want that much. There we go. The rest can go back in there. So, so I've got 10 mil of orgeet, 10 mil of maple. Uh, these, I don't often rock these out anymore. I feel like I'm cheating on uh, my Canadian friends, Ms. Betters Bitters. I feel like I'm cheating on it, but I do love uh, these. These are bitterments, and I've got two of theirs. I do really love these. If if Ms. Betters Bitters, if if she uh, if she decided to rock out a different form of tiki bitters, I would swap. But these are Element Cooley tiki bitters, and they are basically is that. Hang on, let's get it that way. Can you see that? It's basically cinnamon cloves. Um, I forget what else is in here. It's cinnamon, cloves, all spices, and things like that. Uh, so I'm going to use that. But the burlesque ones as well are amazing. It's hibiscus. Uh, where is it? Hibiscus, acai, and something. Pepper. There we go. I, I, I love these. Very, very different to anything I've got going up there. Um, so I'm going to add some tiki bitters to this. And I just, I don't want that much. About a quarter of a pet tiki bitters. Just get those nice kind of Caribbean spices coming through. Ainsley Harriet would be proud of those. And uh, that's it, there was one final ingredient. Now I can't get what I normally do, um, which is really annoying, but the final ingredient uh, I've always done with lilt, but I'm having major issues for some reason getting lilt in the UK, I just can't get it. Um, so that is that, hard and fast shake. Got to give it some welly, get all that puree blended in. Go. 
Right, and then uh, I'm just going Ting instead. I, I haven't got any, I completely forgot. I could get Levi Roots um, Caribbean, I forget what it's called, Caribbean Cooler, is that what it's called? Uh, which is Lilt with Mango, but I'm just going Grapefruit. Ting Grapefruit. Uh, and again, this will be, I just go, um, traditionally, I, I don't go that much. 50 mil max. Here we go. Pour it in the shaker so you don't have to mix it afterwards. It's all blended in. Uh, no need to double strain this. I'm just going to single strain in my cooler, my bamboo cooler. Let's, let's, let's dump all that in as well. Sod it. Sod it. Top with crushed ice. And this is a proper, proper out and out tiki drink. So let's go. Bit of pineapple on there. Let's go another mint sprig. You go with cherry in there if you wanted to. You go pineapple. This is as tiki as I get. This is uh, amazing. So many different flavors in there, but that is what tiki is all about. <laughs> okay, all these all these drinks are perfect for different times of the day. Like, I wouldn't have daiquiris at sort of seven, eight o'clock at night. I'd have daiquiris in the afternoon. Same spritzes, Aperol spritz. I'd have that in the afternoon. But these drinks, again, the punch that I made is an afternoon drink. But these kind of drinks, I'd have definitely in the evenings. Ah, oh, I could drink this. I could drink this all day long. And it's not much, you'll notice, there's not much mixer in there at all. And when I see, when I, when I see cocktail bars and they're whacking literally like 100 ml of pineapple juice in there or 100 ml of orange juice, it's what I say to all of my guys, it's like, you don't need that much juice. Like the zombie, for instance, the zombie, all right, it tastes alcoholic, but it hasn't got that much juice in it at all. I think it's maybe got like 25, 30 ml of juice in it, freshly squeezed grapefruit, it's got nothing in it. And that's the thing, you don't need that much mixers. Oh, stuff. Super stunning. What are we doing for time? Oh, I've got one more cocktail. And this one is very, very crazy. It kind of shouldn't work, but it kind of does work. So we're gonna finish on this. I haven't got a name. I need a name for that one, the last one I did. I need a name for quite a few of these, actually. Right. Da, da, da. Where we get to in the comments? <laughs> yes, Mr. Thomas, I've got uh, I've got a little drip. So I've got the I should have got them all down actually. I've got the 2003 Barbados, which is virtually nearly empty as well, uh, and I've got the Trinidad one up there that's virtually empty as well. So I need to kind of when when I finally <laughs> when I'm when I'm a bit richer, uh, I will restock on the plantations. Uh, right, where do we go? Dun, 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 dun. Comments, comments. That glass looks like a bong. <laughs> we all know you just miffed because you never thought of it. Or what am I? Oh, what the shaker is that? Sorry, the measure is that what that means? Ah, oh, Dave's still here. Agnes Arbor pineapple gin with ting is a great lilt substitute. Yeah, pineapple gin. That's one for Christopher if he's still watching. I think he is, Christopher. Uh, have a look at that, Agnes Arbor Pineapple Gin. Popeye's Punch. Bamboo glass is awesome. Yes. Right, The fight you can find Lil in farm foods. We're posh in Cambridge, we ain't got farm foods around here. Have we? I don't think we have. <laughs> right then, uh, the final cocktail is going in one of these little bad boys. It's kind of a little martini, but it's a little bit fun. And it is using my favorite uh, spirit of all time. So, oh, got chip glass there. So, uh, we're gonna crack straight on with it. I'm going cognac and mixing cognac in cocktails. Not many people do it, but I absolutely love this. It's a sort of fun drink. It's a really fun drink. And it is almost kind of tiki-fied as well. I bet just... It just works right. Better not use that. Better not use that. Let's use that. So uh, this one is uh, 50 ml again. Can I do this in ounces? Now nah, I'm going to stick to UK mil. Uh, 50 ml, double bubble. We like the double bubbles, don't we? 
It's a 50 mil double bubble of a decent cognac. Cognac. Bartenders are going to hate me for this one. They really are. They'll be like, you're doing what with cognac? Ah, shut up. <laughs> we'll have a laugh and a giggle in a minute. Um, right, we're going back to the honey. 10 mil of honey. Honey syrup. This is the blood orange that I kind of got out earlier. So I want 10 mil of a blood orange syrup. So 10 mil honey, 10 mil of blood orange. And I'm really looking forward, if Debbie's still watching, I'm not sure if she is, but I'm going to kind of play with this because I love this cocktail so much. I'm going to kind of play when JJ Whitley's um, blood orange vodka finally uh, kind of hits my shores. Um, which you should do. You should be able to get it in my Morrison's, to be fair. But I think there's room to play. And to be fair, I might even actually kind of try and play with the cranberry. I'm not sure cranberry in, uh, this would work too well with the rest with the other ingredients that are coming. But you never know. Um, I just want some lemon juice in this now. 15 ml of lemon juice. And this is the first part of the cocktail done. Might need some more ice actually. Might need some more ice. Now let's just get some more ice. Cut to a commercial break. God. You wouldn't get this on Saturday Kitchen, would you? Or James Martin, you'd have someone putting more ice in there for him. Oh, I don't know. Right, there we go. Right, ice, shake this up. Uh, shaky, shaky. Where's my other black shaker gone? One, two, three, that'll do. Right, shake this up. So, cognac, honey, blood orange. This is the first part. Need to double strain this in here. I promise you, this is just so much fun, this drink. So much fun. Perfect. It's like I've made it before. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Have I got another glass left? Need to kind of wash this very quickly. There we go, right. Now we're going for the, the froth, the top. Um, coconut rum, that's what I say. Bartenders are gonna hate me. You're doing what with cognac? You put coconut with cognac? Why would you do that? Uh, I really like this coconut rum. Uh, you could use Malibu as a liqueur. Um, it's just a little bit thick. Uh, and I do actually prefer this. You can watch it, you can watch what I think of it on Thursday. But I really do like Captain Morgan's Coconut Rum. Uh, just need 15 mil, one five, of this. It's kind of a fresher, thinner, vibrant coconut rum. It works quite well. Uh, and I just want some pressed pineapple juice. He's doing what with cognac? Blood orange, honey, coconut, pineapple. What are you thinking? Barman, what are you thinking? 25 mil. Actually, let's go a bit more. There we go. 40 mil of pineapple juice. Lovely, jubbly. And then I'm just gonna froth this up. So I want some, my foamers, my Miss Betters Bitters, bit too much. There we go, third of a pipette. Uh, I'm gonna dry shake this first, just to get a bit of froth. Bit of froth. Uh, do I need to shake it down with ice? How cold? That's actually pretty cold. I won't bother. I won't bother. And then just gonna pour this on top. So I've got a coconut, coconut and pineapple froth on top. Let's go proper. Oh, silence. Look at that, look at that. Again, this is another tiki kind of flip on there. Garnish, I never know what to garnish this with. I, I think maybe sort of like dusted or grated cinnamon or, or something, I, I don't know. I don't know what would work perfectly on that. But this, the aromas with that coconut and pineapple. <laughs> oh. I'm giving myself a round of applause. 
<laughs> oh, how I, what I was like when I did the um, JD, uh, te- not that one, the Tennessee Fire, when I loved every single drink that I did. This is just that times ten is absolutely amazing. Uh, I'd, this is kind of for me. It's the heavier nightcap, so it's the kind of nine ten o'clock kind of cocktail. Oh. So what do we reckon, folks? Oh my God, I've got a load of um, load of comments to go through. Uh, while I'm doing these, put these. Which ones do you fancy the most? I'll try and remember what order I did these in. Uh, that was first. That was second. Was that the right order? Third, fourth. I think that was the right order, wasn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, oh it's going to be a long night tonight, isn't it? I'm not. I'm not letting these go to waste. I really ain't. Let's get rid of these. Let's clear the decks. Let's clear the decks and let's get involved in some banter. Some bants. Seven. Seven of Barman's very, very best. Except I stole that from. Uh, oh, Albert Schloss. There we go. And a bit of cognac. Right then. Let's dive into all these comments. Oh, look out. Claire, get on there. Claire, Claire, Claire Louise. Claire Louise, get on Face. Get, get off Face 8. Get on YouTube. Come and join. You can't see all the, the comments on Face 8. And no one watches on Face 8. There's like two people. You and whoever else. Get on, get on Google. Get on, get yourself a Google account, a Gmail. Sign in on YouTube and come and join us on YouTube. Right then. Comments. I have no idea where I got to. There's a ton here. Oh my God, there's a ton. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm sorry if I've missed any questions or anything like that. Uh, I'll try and come through these. Kind of, this is this is the rubbish bit of the thread. <laughs> I need, this is where I need, going forward, I need someone to kind of, uh, a moderator's not even going to help as well. I need, I need a way of bringing the comments on screen. That's what I need. Right, daiquiris, daiquiris, daiquiris. We put, we put coloured sticky dots on our lemon and lime bottles. Da, 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 da. Kevin, Kevin, I'll let you into a little secret. I've got a little dot on my lemon. <laughs> and also, and also, this wouldn't pass, this wouldn't pass some um, health and safety. I've got a little chip in the bottle as well, so I know my lemon juice. <laughs> but they are different colours, to be fair. That's like nice and lemon, and that's greeny for lime. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. Cocktails look banging, Steve. They do. Get these on your bar, Mr. Thomas. Mrs. Thomas will absolutely love you for pretty much all of those, I'm guessing. Uh, Holly went very quiet after the uh, the Midori, so hopefully Holly's gone off to make a Midori sour. Uh, right, where do we get to? Comments, comments, comments. There's so much here. There's so many. Right, let's start here. Uh, Canadian grade A maple syrup here. I don't know, Trevor, I don't understand the grades with maple syrup. I'm obviously assuming from that comment grade A is the best. But is there a grade C or D or is it just grade A and B? What's the difference? I don't understand maple syrup. I need, I need to go on a maple syrup course. Um, Popeye's punch. Oh, I've seen that. Bamboo glass. Right, I've seen that. I've seen that. Right, this is where we're going. Lilt, 0% sugar in Morrison's. Ross, is that cans? I don't like two litre bottles. I'm not getting a two litre bottles. Sidecar? No. Ah, oh, that's what that was. No, right. Uh, did a Booker has lilt. Yeah, Booker. I don't want 24 cans of lilt, though. I never drink them. Uh, da, da, da. Where's Mummy Barman when you need her? She'll be in here. Trust me. As soon as this... She's desperately waiting for this thing to finish because she definitely, she desperately wants to come in here and have these cocktails. I know she does. <laughs> uh, cheers for watching, Moz. Thank you very much. Uh, Al Ho, I was thinking the same Mummy Barman was joining us for her tasting. No, she won't. Pineapple juice makes the most amazing foam. It does when you add some frothers to it as well. Pound, Claire, I told you, Claire, get on, get on YouTube. Don't, don't waste your time with Facebook. No one's on Facebook. It's all, all the fun's in YouTube. Uh, hopefully as well, I've seen, I've said hello to everyone that's commented. If you are still watching and you haven't commented, then shame on you. Get involved. Ross, Ross, Ross. Deborah looks amazing. Thank you. Trevor, a Curacao foam on top would be good too. 
Christopher, right, here we go. Christopher's the first one that's getting his ratings in. Four, right, here we go. Right, Christopher, my German friends. Uh, Christopher, four. So, two. Six. One. Not that one. Oh, crazy. Crazy, Christopher. Right. Uh, Trevor, Mai Tai, Daiquiri, Cognac, rum, water mixer drink. <laughs> water mixer drink? That's a rum punch, Trevor. <laughs> right, there we go. Um, I won't go on. Christopher's changed his mind. Uh, four, three, six, four, three, six, one. Four, three. So he didn't want that one. He wanted that one. The watermelon. Yeah, I thought that'd be up your street a bit more. Uh, spritz last. Who else have we got? What does potato vodka taste like, Steve? Uh, Deborah, it tastes like tastes like potatoes. <laughs> it's very crazy because um, I'm not sure whether you've seen the rebrand from JJ Whitley's, but they've rebranded again, even though they're rebranded at the start of the year. Uh, they've rebranded now. And I think it says Russian, Russian vodka on there. Now, I don't know any Russians that d distill vodka with potatoes. So, <laughs> so I don't know. JJ, they're they're part of um, the Halewoods group, and they're part of obviously Whitley Neal. They they like to elaborate on marketing stories. So, when it says Russian vodka, yeah. Does it, does it taste like, look, the thing with potatoes and the best the best potato vodka to kind of taste this on is Chase. You'll get a very different mouthfeel off a potato vodka. It's a lot creamier, not in a kind of cream sense, but it's a lot smoother, a lot more velvety, a lot creamier in texture going down potato vodkas because they're, they're sort of less starchy than wheat and grain um, and less spicy. Um, than wheat and grain vodkas. So I actually do love potato vodkas. Uh, I think the best value for money one, I'm sure Dave, if he's still watching, living on iPads, would, I don't know whether he's still there, uh, but would back me up on this. And I'm, I'm going to butcher it. I'm sure, sorry if there's any Polish uh, watching, but Luxusova, or Luxusova, however you say it, is an amazing cheap potato vodka. It's just unbelievable. Been around donkey's years, but very kind of different mouthfeels, that's all. Right, where do we get to? There was my little sort of potato vodka kind of thing. Uh, the darker the colour, the higher the grade. Right, okay. So, all right, that's dark in colour. So, there we go. That's that's grade A maple syrup <laughs> compared to something else. Right, da -da -da. number five, Christopher. Missed the first three. Honestly, um, watch the replay. Uh, Mr. Thomas, you'll like this one. Oh, Denver's still watching. Chef Denver. Denver, get on get on YouTube. Get on YouTube. Right, Andy Byron, 542. Hang on, five. Yes, definitely. That's up your street. Four, was it? Yeah, two. Yeah. Knowing your palate, yeah, definitely. I, I'd agree with that. I think, Mr. Byron, I think you would enjoy that. I think I think you would. Right, living on da da da. John Scarrett, hello, Mr. Scarrett. Three, five, seven, three. Aperol Spritz, five, yes, seven. Oh, crazy. Uh, I'm a Danske Rye fan, Sobieski. Oh, Dave's posh, though, isn't he? Dave, Dave's, Dave, for those of you that don't know, Mr. Living on iPad is a TGI's bartender. And that's where he goes. Oh, Danny Bouvray. Danny, we were talking about you a few minutes ago. I was just saying no, I've got less than 50 mil left in that bottle. <laughs> Hope you're well, Mr. Bouvery. Bouvery, Bouvery, Bouvery. Hope you are well. Right, I've, um, I think that's, I've caught up with all the banter. Uh, I will take a photo of Mummy Barman's. Um, she's, she's wised up to the whole recording thing, so she won't, she won't come on. I won't be able to get her on camera ever again like that. So I'll take a photo and I'll post that in my uh, community tab as well. But just before I go, for those that are watching, do not forget, let's mute that one and mute that one. Do not forget that I make your cocktails. As I say, this post is already up in my community tab. Um, so go and s submit your next best cocktails for me and I'll make them on November 22nd. 
And then, as I said, the Christmas special. I'll wait a few more weeks before I put the post up about that. But we're going to have some fun a few days after Christmas. I'll make your Chris Christmas cocktails. They must have a festive um, thing. Uh, I don't, as a general rule, have Advocar in the house. So if I need to get Advocar, at least give me like three weeks warning. All right. And um, if we're ever allowed out before now. So hopefully, oh, there's loads of comments coming in now. Cheapest chips, Sobieski. Is that potato? Sobieski. That's not potato, is it? Sobieski? Don't think it is. Uh, Trevor, I was going to get him to make another drink with Bouvet. Good night all. JBE should send you more. Pronto. <laughs> JBE. I haven't seen JBE pop up tonight. I don't think he's watching. I think it was his, um, I was going to say it was his birthday weekend. It was last weekend, wasn't it? Uh, cheers, Steve. Thanks very much. If you haven't subscribed to Dave, living on iPad, go and subscribe to his channel and get your iPhone fixes and your iPads and whatnots. Who else have we got there? Thank you very much, Claire. Claire, the yummy mummy. Holly, I think Holly disappeared like years ago. So God knows if Holly's still around. Past their bedtime, probably. Uh, Ross, for to practice. Al Ho, thanks very much, Al Ho. Trevor, sun, fun day Sunday. Thank you very much. There's still loads of you watching, which has been absolutely awesome. I can't wait to uh, get involved in these. Again, uh, for those of you who are watching, thank you so much for all the subs, all the love, uh, especially over the last eight months. That's when my channel has come into its own. So we are, uh, my channel took a mini explosion again over the weekend through my Halloween cocktail videos. That kind of went, um, so that shot up, but we'll be coasting along again it'll, it'll dip again in the next few days but uh thank you so much as I said next week is captain morgan's week so there's three i haven't worked out what the third one is but we'll have pineapple and coconut captain morgan's next week um or this week whatever you want to say and then the week after we're going to be doing vodka uh so three vodka videos and then after that who knows but i will see you on the old instagram uh Chopin, there we go. Chopin's another potato, spud vodka. We don't really get Chopin in the UK too much. I haven't seen it for ages. Chase, Chase is pretty much it. Oh, Chase, Chase is now sold to Diageo. Diageo now own Chase. So you could possibly expect to see Chase quite a lot in the States in the next next year, probably. Chase is our biggie. They used to make Tyrrell, uh, Tyrrell's crisps. Yeah. What? Well, hang on. Yes, Tyrrell's crisps. So there we go. Yes, sorry, that's one thing. So when Chase first started, Chase used to be Tyrrell's uh, vodka. And then they kind of had a rebrand after very quickly and became Chase. And then uh, James and Will sold off um, the, the crisp part of that to Tyrrell's. So yes, so it is the very same potatoes that make Tyrrell's crisps is Chase vodka. There we go. Right. Uh, thank you very much for watching. It's been emotional and I will see you on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, uh, do so. I need to mute that and I need to mute that. There we go. Unlock that. Oh, that'll do. Let's get rid of Hang On 4. That's the Christmas one, isn't it? Yeah, let's mute that. Follow me on Instagram. I don't know what else is showing. That one. There we go. That's better. Follow me on Instagram. Say hello in the DMs and I will see you uh, next week. And I'll remember to shut off the recording this week because the show went on for an extra half an hour. <laughs> last week because I forgot to end the stream. So it's been an absolute honour. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the cocktails. Let me know what you think in the DMs and I will speak to you very, very soon.